It's 2024, now four years since the incredible 2019 that Joey Gallo had with the Texas Rangers. And following a one-year deal with the Washington Nationals, Gallo joins his fourth team in the last four seasons. Joey Gallo has had an incredibly weird career up till now, from a top prospect to a budding star in the league, all the way to one of the most hated players within the game. And I want to see if we can make any sense of it. What's going on with Joey Gallo? who as it sits is only 30 years old. It's been a rough last couple seasons, but let's go ahead and break it down. But first, if you guys do enjoy these videos, please subscribe to the channel, would greatly appreciate it. And also a quick shout out to Underdog Fantasy. They're continuing to ramp up for their season long MLB pickums. They're adding in new player prompts every single day. I love the simplicity of it. It's a basic, is he going to go over? Is he going to go under? It couldn't be easier. And there couldn't be a better time to get started with Underdog Fantasy because if you use my promo code GOMES, you're gonna get a $100 deposit match. So gear up for the baseball season with Underdog Fantasy. Thank you to them for sponsoring the channel. So first and foremost, a refresher course. Just what has been going on with Joey Gallo. By 2015, Joey rocketed himself up the MLB prospect rankings all the way to top 10. His first official season would come in 2017, where he'd go on to smack 41 dingers and follow that up with another 40 in 2018. Of course, the discourse with baseball stats was a lot different even seven years ago than it is now. People pointed to his batting average, which was uh, not very high. It was just a shade over 200. And a lot of people doubted whether or not he could be a really good player in this league. And of course, there was much conversation centered around the strikeout percentage. In 2017, it landed at 36.8% and it didn't get much better the following year. 35.9%. But I think what a lot of people fail to look at with Gallo is there was more to it than just the plate. Because he was a versatile defender, he could play corner infield, and he could also play the outfield, all at a pretty damn good level. And that all led to 2019, where Gallo really broke out. He was phenomenal. In just 70 games, he hit 22 home runs and OPS soaring right up near the 1,000 mark. Even the batting average was way higher than normal at 253. Of course, that won't win you any batting titles, but combined with the elite walk rate, an on-base percentage just shy of 400. On top of that, Gallo's defense was taking another step and he was truly becoming an elite outfielder. But unfortunately, as we alluded to, that season would get cut short, just 70 games played following a wrist injury that shut him down from the end of July until the end of the season. 2020 would be a misstep offensively, of course a weird season with the COVID year, 60 game season, but defensively, Joey Gallo was better than ever. He had 13 defensive runs saved in just 53 games in right field, locking up his first Gold Glove award, an accomplishment he'd repeat the next year. Back-to-back -back Gold Glove wins after 15 defensive runs saved and an additional four outs above average. And 2021 was also a good year with the Lumber. Playing in Texas before the trade deadline, Gallo posted a 138 OPS plus, much thanks to the 25 home runs that he hit. But most noticeably to me was the strikeout and walk percentages. He struck out at 32.2% which is still high, but it was the lowest in his career. And his walk percentage was all the way up to 19.1. From there, it would all start to go downhill. Of course, he was traded to the New York Yankees that trade deadline in 2021. Wasn't as bad as things would get in the Bronx, but it certainly was a stark decline from what he was in Texas. The progress he made with his discipline at the plate went away. The strikeouts were back up and the walks were going down. He had still hit for power, but the on-base percentage went down by about 80 points. In the next season, things would really start to get out of hand. It was very clear. Joey Gallo did not appreciate how the fans and the New York media treated him. It went as far as the Yankees announcer Michael Kay openly criticizing him 
on air before the game. Between that and the abysmal performance, Joey Gallo got shipped out of town and went to the Los Angeles Dodgers, where he'd spend the remainder of 2022. He seemed happier. He grew his beard back. Unfortunately, the stats didn't quite grow back, as they were still well below Joey's standards. And that left him in a weird spot as a unrestricted free agent. The Minnesota Twins decided to give him a one-year, $11 million deal to see if they can reconstruct the 29-year-old Joey Gallo into what he was. And in the beginning of the season, it looked like the Twins found themselves a diamond in the rough. Joey Gallo was incredible in April. He hit seven homers in just under 50 plate appearances to make his debut with the Twins. From there, some injuries would slow him down and he would get back into his old habits. On the whole, he finished as a positive bat, a 101 OPS plus, hitting 21 home runs. But when you examine his 2023 a bit closer, there's a lot of work to be done to get Gallo back to his 2019 ways. The strikeout problem for Joey Gallo rose to new heights in 2023. His K-rate rose to a heart-stopping 42.8%, and that is simply too high. Gallo did start to retain his health down the stretch. The Twins opted not to play him, and the strikeout percentage was a big reason why. So if Joey Gallo wants to resurrect his career in Washington, he's going to have to make some changes to his approach at the plate. He's still hitting for a lot of power. 21 home runs in 332 plate appearances is elite power levels, an ISO at about 260. The problem there is if he's not barreling up the ball, Hitting it out of the ballpark, it's either a strikeout or it's going to be weak contact, likely a pop-up into the infield or shallow outfield. And looking deep into the numbers, a big thing that I was able to tell is he's swinging at the first pitch a lot more and he's not getting himself into these favorable counts that made him such a dangerous hitter that makes pitchers give in and throw to his wheelhouse. In 2019, Joey Gallo swung at the first pitch 27.9% of the time. That since rose to 40.2% of the time. That data goes hand in hand with the contact quality that he's been able to put up. He's never been an elite bat to ball guy. He's always been someone who's going to swing and miss. But if you also look at his chase percentage, despite putting up a high walk rate, Gallo isn't nearly as patient for his pitch as he used to be. Combining Gallo's 2-0, 3-0, and 3-1 counts he'd get himself into, 2019 and 2021, that number was over 40%. Now in 2023, it's dropped down to 30%, and that gives the pitchers a big advantage because they can work the corners more or just throw a complete waste pitch that still has a decent to high chance of getting Joey Gallo to swing and miss. Of course, a big thing with Gallo's game is he's going to pull the ball. In 2023, he pulled the ball just shy of 60% of the time. The highest in his career, and that's no surprise. Of course, with the changes with the shift, He's more incentivized to pull the ball than ever because they can only have two infielders on the right side of the infield. But again, it brings up the age-old debate. There's few players with the kind of raw power that Joey Gallo possesses. But do you always need to swing for the fences? Are you trying to do too much in certain cases? I do think Gallo has the tools to be what he was in 2019 or even as recently as the first half of 2021. It really was not that long ago that he was seen as one of the premier players in the game. I think he's just got to get comfortable again, and being on the field is a big part of that. He was sporadically placed on the injured list in 2023, but heading into this next campaign, a good bill of health is very crucial to him being what he used to be, and especially on the other side of the ball because that's the big differentiator between Joey Gallo and most of these three true outcome players, is that he has the ability to play gold glove defense. So overall, a one-year $5 million deal from the Nationals, a team that, you know, they'd love to compete, but they might not be quite there yet. They've got a great farm system of outfielders with James Wood and Dylan Cruz who are going to come up. 
it's a perfect time to bring in a Joey Gallo and see what happens. Best case scenario is he's really good and you keep him or you trade him at the deadline. And worst case, you're out $5 million. There's worse things for billionaire owners. But let me know in the comment section down below, what do you think of Joey Gallo heading to Washington? And do you think that he can come back to an all-star silver slugger caliber level? If you guys enjoyed this video, leave a like down below. Thank you for watching.